Once again, we have a government that is trying to ban or heavily regulate the use of encryption. This time, it's the UK proposing changes to their Investigatory Powers Act, and you'll never guess the reason for the change in legislation. Of course, it's to protect the children and stop the terrorists. The same excuses that the government always rolls out to try and justify the erosion of your rights. And this is really ironic, considering that for the last few years, the United Kingdom has apparently had a problem with these so-called grooming gangs. These gangs that are mostly made up of Muslim men who, according to some of the survivors of the abuse, would kidnap, beat, torture, and do many more horrible things to these girls, some of whom were as young as 11 years old. And in some cases, these grooming gangs have been active in the UK since the early 80s. It almost seems like the UK's federal and local law enforcement were letting these groups get away with abusing children for long enough to make people desperate enough to have the government step in and do something extreme. Well, this is exactly what the UK is offering up with their online safety bill. And of course, they would give it a name like this, even though it does the exact opposite of making the online world more safe. I'm telling you right now, if the government ever passes a law saying that the owners of pit bulls, rottweilers, and German shepherds must immediately euthanize their dogs, the government's probably going to call it the Protect the Dogs Act. One big problem with this bill is the requirement of tech companies to do proactive scanning of their platforms for CSAM. But in order to do this, apps that offer encryption would have to design that encryption in such a way that either allows the owners of the platform at the very least, or possibly even a third party to decrypt those messages and decrypt those communications and then view the contents or attachments to scan it for CSAM. And this is one of the more common tactics that we see these days to get rid of encryption, especially in the West where we're supposed to have more freedoms. So the idea behind this is that the government is still gonna let you have your encryption, okay? You get to have encryption, you, you even get to have end-to-end -end encryption. But if the police get a warrant, or they suspect you of a crime, then the company is supposed to decrypt that data for the police, or possibly even hand the encryption keys over to the police so that they can then decrypt your messages. And I think the reason that it's presented this way is to trick people into thinking that this is just a continuation of the laws we already have. This is just the Fourth Amendment in the digital age, right? or whatever the equivalent of that is in your country. Here in the United States, Fourth Amendment, it prevents the police from searching your house without a warrant. But backdooring encryption really isn't an equal comparison to this because the technical implementation would end up giving someone access to effectively everyone's data, at least everyone that is using that specific platform or that specific encryption protocol. So whoever has that key, that breaks everyone's encryption has to be obviously trusted to use it responsibly. But you also run into the problem of someone unauthorized getting access to this key, some kind of hacker, most likely a state sponsored one. I mean, if they can get a key to break encryption of an entire messaging platform for a country, a very popular one like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, the damage would be unimaginable. See, the thing is, it's really difficult to prevent someone from getting access to your encrypted data when it's passing over the internet. A lot of that stuff is automatically collected and stored by probably several different spy agencies all over the world. I mean, it's definitely being collected and stored by the NSA. So it's not like the feds really need to go to your house and necessarily seize your phone or computer like they would with a normal search warrant in order to see what's in it. They already have your messages. They already have data that you've transmitted over the internet. It's just encrypted. And hackers are also able to steal encrypted data almost as easily. For example, with free and open source software like Wireshark and a wireless antenna, someone can copy the data that's being transmitted from your laptop or from your phone to your wireless router, which ultimately goes out to the internet, and this can be done in a totally passive way. It's not like they have to log on to your network or like necessarily hack into your network. 
And with long range antennas, they can collect this data from over a mile away as long as they have line of sight to your house. The only saving grace here, the only reason that this aspect of wireless communication is in a giant security problem is the fact that communications between your router and your devices are encrypted and hopefully using a modern encryption that isn't easy to break. So without secure encryption, things that we take for granted like Wi-Fi and LTE, it's no longer secure. The technical implementation of a backdoor into encryption is also not very feasible. For one, there's many different kinds of encryption that are used in different applications that are created by different vendors. And in some cases, they're even creating their own encryption. So you run into a situation where Apple is gonna have to backdoor FaceTime and iMessage and all their applications. Meta is gonna have to backdoor WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. Signal has to backdoor their app and so on. So this bill is gonna require a lot of different backdoors and different applications to be made, which exponentially increases the chance of abusive spying taking place by individual companies or hackers that might compromise the security of any of those companies. But what disappoints me the most about this proposed bill isn't the clear lack of technical understanding that the people writing these laws and passing these laws have, it's how ineffective laws like this will be at actually stopping criminals from committing crime. Just like how here in the US, we have laws against owning automatic weapons, unless you have special licenses, but that doesn't stop gangbangers from putting switches on their guns or making other simple modifications to them to make them full auto. Making encryption illegal or trying to put regulations on it doesn't guarantee that online criminals will comply with that law at all or that they are going to use any of these backdoor platforms. Most of the encryption that we use every day is based on open source software and open source algorithms. So putting in a backdoor that isn't obvious is already almost impossible. But even if you come up with some really clever obfuscation technique that nobody detects for a very, very long time, the people that really care about their privacy, and I guess the slightly smarter criminals, are just gonna use independent forks of the encryption protocols, or they could just go and create their own brand new encryption protocols. I mean, it's usually not recommended to roll your own encryption, but necessity is the mother of invention, and privacy advocates have been able to create some pretty good encryption so far. So it's probably no surprise that a lot of companies are just outright refusing to comply with these backdoors and that they're threatening to pull their services from the UK altogether. Apple very recently said that they would remove some of their end-to-end -end encrypted services like FaceTime and iMessage from the UK rather than backdoor the security of those apps in order to comply with the bill if it passes, which is kind of funny because not too long ago, Apple wanted to scan everyone's photos in iCloud or CSAM before deciding not to after a great deal of backlash. Uh, WhatsApp has an open letter to the UK government voicing their concerns about the bill and Signal has also done the same thing. There really is no effective way to ban or backdoor encryption without compromising the security of all its users. It wouldn't be effective at all at catching these more sophisticated grooming gangs that end up doing this stuff for decades. That's clearly organized crime, which secure communications are just a small part of. So far, the most popular encrypted messaging platforms are just refusing to comply with this or they're straight up leaving the UK. So unless the United Kingdom wants to go full Iran with their internet censorship and block all of these apps from the app store, block websites that are offering encrypted services, and block VPNs and Tor to keep people from getting around the censorship, then they're not going to be able to effectively implement it. Even then, all that's gonna do is just make it slightly easier for them to catch the dumbest of criminals who they probably could have caught without breaking an encryption, and it's all gonna be at the expense of the entire country's secure communications. Is that really worth it?